took me upstairs. She took all my clothes off. She tied my hands behind my back. She braided up about 12 switches. And she grabbed them by my neck. And she whooped, and she whooped, and she whooped, and she whooped. And when she got tired, she went out some more. When I got away from her, I don't know how, by the grace of God, I got away from her. I knocked down the attic door. And since I knew what the floor looked like, you know there's no floor, there's just boards. I went all the way down as far as I could go. I turned to the left, and there was a slip. And I hid in that slip. My hands tied behind my back. Pitch dark. And I cried to God. Yes. At an early age, I learned how to call Jesus. Yes. Teenagers, if you don't know nothing else, yes. if you don't have a parent like God did, you better thank God. Amen. Yes. I learned how to hide. I learned where to hide. At an early age, my mother told me, don't talk to your stepfather. Don't mention his name. Try not to be in the same room with him. But you know that's bad. But you gotta live with that person. Yeah. A scar can, can can have us so scared of somebody finding out that it shut us up and sit us down. That's right. Yes, indeed. I tell it because when I tell it to you, you ain't got to worry about nobody else telling it to you. That's right. But see, when I tell it, I'm telling you. Then I ain't got to worry about her trying to tell it to her. And, her and by the time it gets to her, I done murdered somebody. Yes. <laughs> a scar is a way of destroying our self esteem and our self confidence right. and the ability to serve. And I was scared all the time. And a lot of the things that I went through today, I still go through them. I'm 61 years old, and I'm scared of the dark because of what the dark brought to me. You all know what I'm talking about. I'm scared of somebody walking up behind me because my mother used to walk up behind me all the time and hit me. So if anybody ever walks up behind me, it freaks me out. And I tell people, don't do that. Don't do that. I don't care if it's just this. I'm freaked out. I had such cruel parents that I really didn't know if I was living. My stepfather didn't like me because my mother had an affair while they were together. And I reminded him every day of the person that my mother slept with. So that's the way I was treated. You see, I'm not afraid to tell my story. Right? I'm not afraid because there's a lot of people sitting here that's going through the same thing I did, but you're not going to tell them. And that's OK if you don't want to tell them. But every time I tell you, it frees me. Amen. And every time I tell you, somebody come up and say, Sister Maxwell, I'm so glad you said that. Everybody know who I am. Who don't know me? <laughs> How many places have I spoken? How many places have I sang and you didn't know my story? Let me tell you something. There are three things that can happen to you when you have scars like me. One, you can feel sorry for yourself. Two, you can feel ashamed. Three, you can be afraid. But see, what I do, every time I tell you, it helps me. That's right. I still go through things, man. Even when I was grown, I thought stepfather, I was afraid of him. My stepfather was as tall as I am, maybe a little short. He was. But he always treated me like I was nothing. I don't even know if I can even explain to you how I feel right now because emotions inside of me. But see, I know that God protected me. I wasn't a Christian, but I had all his mercy. Yes. Yes. There were times when I could feel God close to me. There were times when I knew that God would help me. Yeah. But the devil still tried to destroy me because you know what? Today he didn't want me to tell the story. That's right. That's right. So at five years old, he was trying to hurt me. Seven years old, he was trying to hurt me. At 14 years old, I had a birthday. And I told my mother, I want to fight for my birthday. We've been talking about it for weeks. And I really think my mother was bipolar because one day,
day she could be sweet, and the next day she could beat your head to death. One day she could be sweet, so I tried to catch her on the good day. But she said, wow, well, you know, we're going to really try to get you a bike this year, because everybody in the neighborhood had a bike, and we all, all of us had one bike. My birthday came, and I'm thinking the bike was here, and she said, we're going to leave, we're going to come back. I don't know how the world she talked to me. Give me this bike because he never wanted to do anything for me. And I'm waiting for that bike. When they came to the house, there's 27 steps from the door down to where they were. And when I stepped out on the porch, he looked up at me and he had this look on his face. And whenever I'm in trouble, whenever he's getting ready to do something really bad to me, he has that look. And I looked at him. I looked at my mother, and she was standing like this. I said, uh-oh, oh, something wrong. Ran down there and grabbed it like I was excited. You know, in them days, they had to grab big old cars. You could put everything in the back. Yeah. Lifted up the trunk, pulled out this bike. It was so rusty that you couldn't even tell what color the bike was. The chain was rusty. The tire was flat. He took the bike out. Head me to me, and he stood there waiting for me. This look on his face to cry. And at that time, I was standing there looking up at him. This little kid now, 14, and I kind of felt a little warmth in my chest. And some said, Now you know you got to take care of yourself. Now you know these people don't care about you. Now you know. So instead of me crying, I'm grabbing bikes and wow, thanks for the bike. <laughs>